بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سورة الكوثر number 108 I will recite it and then I will explain it أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سورة الكوثر الكوثر as an Arabic word is from the origin كثرة كثير and كوثر so a lot of scholars said الكوثر is from a lot and because it is here mentioned and it is given to Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام so it is a lot of goodness a lot of goodness in this life and in the hereafter is al-kawthar as scholars explained inna a'tainaka al-kawthar we have granted you we have given you al-kawthar so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is saying to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in this ayah that he gave him al-kawthar. In here, there are two narrations about when this ayah um, was revealed. There is one narration and there is another one in the journey of al-Isra and al-Mi'raj. Number one. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, um, before what he said, he was with the companions one day and he fell asleep. We know that revelation comes to prophets and messengers as dreams and sometimes it comes to them to their hearts as inspiration. Sometimes Jibreel alayhi salam comes to them. In this, in this case, these ayat were revealed to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam when he was asleep. So when he was asleep, he saw, when he woke up, he was smiling. So the Prophet, the, the companions asked him, you are smiling, peace be upon you. And he said to them, in the, in the dream, it was revealed to me, Bismillahir Rahman al Rahim, Inna Atainaka al Kauthar, Fasalli li Rabbika wanhar, Inna Shani Akahu al Abtar. So, from Bismillahir Rahman al Rahim until the end of the surah, it was all revealed together, all together. So then he asked them, Do you know what is al Kauthar? Inna Atainaka al Kauthar. We said, the Sahaba said, Allah and his messenger know. We don't know. So he said to them, it is a river. Allah wa ta'ala promised me that he will give it to me. And it is going to be like from the river, from the water of that river, it will be in this hawd where it is like a pool, like a swimming pool, but it is not for swimming, it is for drinking. It will have uh, water from that uh, river in the day of judgment. So we will be talking about that in, uh, inshallah, when we come to the part of the day of judgment. In another narration that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, when he went in the journey of al-Isra and Mi'raj, and when he was in the in Jannah, subhanallah, in heaven, he saw this river and he put his hands in the water, 
In another narration, he put his hand in the sand, in the mud, and he took off the sand and the mud of the uh, Al Kawthar of this river, and it was musk. Musk in like we have like Al, -al Misk Al Adfar in Arabic is a very a very natural and very expensive uh, musk. So it's a very beautiful like smelling and it is white because the sand of that subhanallah river will be white in Jannah. So he said this river when I saw the river it has like tents like um, like what they what they call them like um, like a dome a dome like domes uh, on the sides of this river the domes are made of pearls can you imagine this river and has domes made of pearls and he said on the sides there are gold and silver from down subhanallah you know the stones and uh, yeah, the small stones under the water he said they are pearls the water is so white whiter than milk in another narration whiter than snow so it is not transparent as we know it is like milk and he said it is ahla min al asal it is sweeter than honey so if you drink it it is sweeter than honey it is white and on the sides there are gold and silver the stones are made of pearls and these ex uh, expensive uh, stones there are many names different colors for these expensive stones and subhanallah they are going to be the stones around it and inside it imagine this is just a river in Jannah Allahu Akbar so what are the houses then what are the accessories if this is a river that you will be going there and you will walk on these stones subhanallah how amazing Jannah is and we should be always thinking about it imagining it asking Allah wa ta to be from the people of Jannah today my beautiful sisters we have to sit down and make a decision I want to be from the people of Jannah and this is my target my target is to go to Jannah okay Jannah is 100 levels as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in another narration so there are 100 levels of Jannah and the highest is Al Firdaus Al A'la this river will be flowing from Al Firdaus Al A'la and then it will be going in other Jinan in other uh, levels of Jannah but it will be flowing the source of flowing of this river will be from the highest level from Al Firdaus Al A'la. So, which level do you want to be in? We have to make that decision today. Otherwise, we forget and we will be distracted. Write it, memorize it, and think about it every day. And in every sujood, ask Allah wa Ta'ala to go to Firdaus Al A'la. The Prophet salatu wasalam, said, when you ask Allah for Jannah, ask him for Firdaus Al-A'la. What is the secret in asking Allah to, to go to Firdaus Al-A'la? Because when you say, when you ask Allah wa Ta'ala to go to Firdaus Al-A'la, then you have to work hard for it. Is it a very hard work? We will be talking about that, inshallah, at the end of this surah. I will be talking about what are required to go to Firdaus Al-A'la. So in here, this is the description of this river. So this river is in Jannah and it will be flowing from Al Firdaus Al-A'la. And of course, as we said, it has um, uh, domes 
made of pearls. They are like tents. You know, when you go to a river and you want to sit down, so you have this beautiful tent above you, but imagine when it is pearls. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful. And it is something that we cannot even imagine. The beauty of Jannah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, it is something that we have never seen in our lives. It is something we have, we never heard of that beauty and it is beyond our imagination. So if you sit down and imagine the beauty of this river, you will not, subhanAllah, reach the real beauty of it. And this is just a small part of it, just a river. So this Al-Kawthar is white, sweeter than honey, and the sand of it is musk. You know, it, like, just give you, like, I want to give you an idea about the musk. Um, after the death of the Saudi king, that the last king who died, one man said, we are not allowed to go to, like, in the castle of the king, there is a room. This room is only for perfumes, just for the perfumes for the king and his guests, king's guests. And he was showing the perfumes of the king of Saudi. And he is a human being in this life. He was talking about like a small bottle like this, and it costs $50,000. And he was talking about uh, small, you know, the wooden things that when you burn them, you smell, it makes the house smell nice. He was talking about a million dollars for a box. A small box, he was, he was showing us on the video, he was showing people the perfumes and how much they cost and they are only for the king. And you know that the least level of Jannah, the last person who leaves Jannah, the last Muslim who leaves hellfire after the punishment and goes to heaven where he will be in the least level, the lowest level, subhanAllah. He will have like five kings of this life. And, and in another narration, 10 kings of this life. So imagine his perfume in a small bottle like that, which is $50,000. That's going to be the sand that you will be walking on. That is your place in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. So do we care about perfumes? Do we care about jewelry in this life after hearing this? The pearls. People kill each other for pearls and for money and for musk. For people hate each other. People have jealousy because of these worldly things and jealousy makes them harm each other subhanallah for something they will be walking on that is outside in the wild it is not even inside my house that is outside your your guests will be coming and they will be walking on it so do we care about this life after hearing this allahu akbar so this is, this is Al-Kawthar, and it's going to be in the highest level of Jannah. So he saw these, uh, these ayat were revealed to the Prophet والسلام, while he was asleep. And then after that, he spoke about how this water will be, part of this water will be, in the day of judgment how the also in um, like um, Ibn Kathir said that there will be like pipes we call them in Arabic Mizrab you know on the top of the house when it rains and the, ha the, the water will be gathering there. So to get rid of the water, they, they put a pipe and it takes, the water goes down 
and then it goes on the ground. So it doesn't stay on the ceiling. In here, there will be pipes from the water of Al Kawthar and they will go down to the pool where we will be standing up in the day of judgment. So this is how the water of Al Hawd of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will have water from Al Kawthar. Every time the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will be taking water with his uh, hand filling these cups and he will be giving his community the community of billions so as a result the water will be uh, becoming less so with these pipes subhanallah it will be always refilled from the water of al kawthar the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that in the day of judgment there will be his hawd and this will be filled, the, this hawd, this pool, will be filled with water from Al Kawthar. And there will be around it cups from Jannah, and they will be the number of the stars of this sky. So there will be millions of cups from Jannah waiting there for the believers. And he said that he will be waiting for his ummah to come to him one by one. He will fill the cups and give to them. Everyone who takes from his hands water, he will be standing up with him. But he said, I will see the angels pushing some people away from me. They are trying to come and stand up in their turns to drink hands from my hand, to stand up with me to be with me, to go with me to Jannah, but the angels are pushing them away from me. So there will be guardians and they allow some people to go and some people they push them away. You're not in here. You do not belong to this Ummah. So the Prophet والسلام, said, I will be calling the angels. This is my Ummah. They are my followers. They are Muslims. Why do you push them away from me? And they will be saying to him, Innaka la tadri ma ahdathu ba'dak. You do not know, Muhammad, peace be upon you. After your death, what they did, they left your sunnah. They left your way. They did not follow your book. They did not follow your sayings. So they are the ones who claimed that they loved you. They claimed that they are Muslims, but they are not. Because in Islam, it is not enough to say, I am a Muslim. In Islam, I am a Muslim, and then I have to prove that I am a Muslim. Yes, there are conditions for that. So the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, of course, he will be sad for them. And then there will be shafa'a, intercession. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will intercede for some Muslims. Subhanallah, we do not know if we are going to be with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to drink water from his hands. Are we going to be those who deserve the shafa'a of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? or we will be something else. No one knows. No one knows. Because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in one authentic hadith that no one, Jibreel alayhi salam said to him, no one will enter Jannah with his own deeds. Yes, Allah knows our hearts and what it has and what it contains. According to what is in your heart, Allah will give you. So he will accept your deeds, of course, if you are sincere. But in the end, we go to Jannah with the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala. So he asked, even me? The answer is, yes, Ya Rasulullah, even you. No one enters Jannah except with the mercy of Allah. 
So we have to ask the mercy of Allah every day. Yes, for Allah to, wa ta to grant us his mercy and to be pleased from us and ask him for al-firdaus al-a'la. Subhanallah, for this part, we have to go back to the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. You might say, but ibadah is a lot. We are in a time we can barely pray the five prayers. Sahaba and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, they used to pray at night every day and they used to pray third of the night, two thirds of the night, they slept little bit. And they always remembered Allah wa ta'ala. They read Quran, subhanAllah, how much they recited Quran. Some of them recited all the Quran in seven days. Some of them in 10 days. At least, at least every month. We can barely recite. Some people can recite one page only. How can I be with them if I cannot do what they used to do? Ibadah is... You know, there is a huge gap between our ibadah and their ibadah. There are two things which will comfort you as a Muslim, insha'Allah. Two glad tidings, two beautiful news from Allah wa ta'ala. Number one, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, there will be time of fitna. Fitna, distractions distractions everywhere you have internet we have devices we have tv and you have 600 channels in the tv and it is on day and night and then after that you have these malls shopping malls you can see everything in them like it is like calling you come and buy me they are all Subhanallah, the decorations and the way they, 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 they distribute them to you, it distracts us. The houses, the cars, the furniture, the accessories, gold and silver, Subhanallah. Children, they did not have schools like us today and they have six or seven subjects and you have to teach them. English and math and science and they have to study and then we have to teach them Islam and we have to cook and we have to clean subhanallah so we have a lot of distractions now and this is really fitna and people who are practicing Islam are little in number yes you cannot find someone who really really practices Islam because when I say practices Islam means two things it is like a scale with two things we cannot miss one of them we have ibadah that you have to do obligations and live haram and on the other hand we have akhlaq manners it is not enough that i pray and fast but my manners are bad and it is not enough to have good manners without praying without fasting without reciting quran we have to have both of them. I do the obligations like praying and fasting and reciting Quran. I leave the haram major, like ghiba, like backbiting or harming people. And also akhlaq. When I'm dealing with people, I have to be a trustworthy person. I don't hurt the feelings of people. I don't mock anyone. I don't call people names. I don't say bad words or dirty words. I respect everybody. So to have these things in this time, the Prophet والسلام, said, in the time when fitna is a lot, distractions are a lot, faith of Muslims are down, haram, you are surrounded by haram everywhere, if you worship Allah properly by doing the obligations and leaving the haram and have good manners, you have the ajr, the reward like 50 sahaba. 
50 of the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will be in your scale if you have these things. And when we talk about these things, we speak about basics. You pray the five prayers properly with khushu'a, with tuma'nina, that you know what you are reading and you try to understand what you are reciting. Slowly, tuma'nina is slowly. You do not hurry when you are uh, praying quickly, quickly. You relax and you, uh, you try to uh, relax your muscles, relax your uh, veins, subhanallah, and then you pray. Imagine when you relax your muscles and you relax everything, your body, and then in your ruku'ah you say, khasha'a laka basari, khasha'a laka sam'i wa basari. My hearing, my, my, my sight, they surrender to you, Ya Allah. Khasha'a laka azmi, my bones surrender to you, Ya Allah. My veins surrender to you, Ya Allah. After you say, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. So you glorify Allah and you really surrender to him properly in your prayers. You pray sunnah before and after every fard with adhkar. Maybe you don't have time. If you are really busy, you don't have time for uh, nafila. You don't have nafila. You can have it by having good manners. How? This is the second one. Having good manners, which means, as I said, respect people. Listen to them. Don't interrupt them when they speak. And be merciful to them. Help them when they need you. Do not harm them. Do not hurt their feelings. Don't call them names. Don't make fun of them. Don't make fun of their societies or traditions or language or the way they dress or the way they eat. Be patient as much as you can. If you have that, the Prophet والسلام, said, whoever have good manners, Allah wa ta'ala will give him the reward of fasting the daytime and praying Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl is the prayer at night. This is nafila. The best prayer after the fard is Qiyamul Layl. Imagine you have Qiyamul Layl and you are asleep. You are in your bed sleeping, but the angels write for you, she woke up at night and prayed Qiyamul Layl. In the daytime, you eat and you drink. But because of your good manners, because of your patience, the angels, the angel on the, on the right writes, she fasted. So fasting, subhanAllah, the, the whole day, the proper fasting. So you will be fasting all the year. You will be making Qiyamul Layl every night all the year without doing that. You have the reward of them because of your good manners. Yes. This is the simple thing that we can do in this life, to respect and speak less because sometimes, most of the times, haram comes from speaking. Yes, as the Prophet والسلام, said, most of people who are punished in the grave and in, the, in Jahannam because of this tongue. Because of this tongue, subhanAllah, I don't want to go to Jahannam. I don't want to be punished in, in the grave. And you will have ujur, inshallah. You will be rewarded for as if you made qiyamul layl and as if you fast. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, the heaviest good deed in the scale of hasanat in the day of judgment is the good manners. The things that we said, these are all good manners, especially patience. Patience is... Subhanallah, the highest level of ibadah in Islam is patience. Of course, patience is good manners. The patient person is the person who doesn't harm others or hurt their feelings. That is the patient person. And that's why Allah wa ta'ala said in Quran, Udukhulu, enter Jannah, he's talking to the believers, bima sabartum, with, for your patience. Enter Jannah, for your patience. And then in another ayah, Enter it peacefully, 
for what you did in your life. Subhanallah. For what? Because they were peaceful in this life. So you, when you are peaceful in this life, you enter Jannah peacefully, insha'Allah. So this is the believer. Al-Kawthar is my target. To drink from Al-Kawthar in the day of judgment is my target. To be with Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in the day of judgment, to go with him to Jannat al-Firdaus is my target. Subhanallah, that is very important. And then, Fasalli, pray. See, he's talking about Al Kawthar. We gave you Kawthar. For Kawthar, Fasalli. So you have to pray. Praying is the, the, the best ibadah in Islam, Subhanallah, when it comes to ibadah, like Siyam and Qiyam and things like that. Praying is the best, but of course, good manners are better than nafila, the praying nafila. If you have good manners, it will be better than that. Yes. And then, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ Pray to your Lord. وَنْحَرْ وَنْحَرْ Slaughter animals for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That is an nahr You know, the day of slaughtering animals we call it yawmun nahr that is the first day of eid al adha the second day third and fourth so the first day of eid al adha we call it yawmun nahr three days after that we call them ayamu tashriq the three days are the, the four days are for slaughtering animals it starts from yawmun nahr wanhar Slaughter animals as Allah ordered you with the conditions, of course, not to oppress animals, not to kill them and make them suffer. We have to make them uh, comfortably, subhanAllah, slaughtered. And we always say Bismillah in the beginning of slaughtering. And that will be a great reward from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So anybody who wants to Thank Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. If we have money, we can slaughter animals and give to the poor. Because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned that it'aamu ta'am is one of the good deeds that makes the person enters heaven peacefully. So that's it'aamu ta'am. Every time you have the chance to pay for a sheep or cow or a camel or wherever, for the sake of Allah, to pay it, to give it to the poor, do it. This is one of the great deeds in Islam. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Shani'aka is the person who hates you. Okay? A shani' is the person who hates. The person who doesn't like, doesn't love. This is, subhanallah, in here, some scholars said he is Abu Lahab because he was always against the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And some people say that he is Abu Jahl. Some people say, uh, like some scholars, not any uh, people, some scholars say that he is Al-As bin Wa'il. So different names, but the quality is the same. He hated the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And he hated the Quran and the guidance that was revealed to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So simply he hated Islam. He hated the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and he hated Islam. And he wanted to destroy Islam. So they say that Al-As bin Wa'il, every time the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was mentioned, he used to say, Leave him, leave him, because he is abtar. What is abtar? In Arabic, when a man has uh, boys, sons, uh, males, when they die, or if he doesn't have children, he doesn't have boys, maybe he has only girls. If he doesn't have a boy, they used to say, 
butter. This man, butara, means he will not be mentioned after he dies. Because if he had a son, his son will remind people with his father. So people will remember the father usually from the man. You know, because how, how much they cared about males and they used to um, bury the girls alive. They hated girls. So they used to say, if the man has a son, his son will, will make people remember his father after his death. But of course, this is not true in Islam. Whether I have children or not, maybe I don't have children, I will be remembered than a man who has 50 children. It is not a rule. People remember you with what you do, with what you are. And Allah wa ta'ala, if he's pleased from you, that is enough. So we don't need to be remembered. We need just to make Allah wa ta'ala pleased from us. So this is all before Islam. This is before Islam. So if the man doesn't have children, they say, Batara fulan. This man, Batar, means he will not be remembered. Now, when they cut a hand in Islam, it is butter the hand. We butter the leg. So it means cut. So his remembrance will be cut. So that's why they use this word. So he will have no remembrance. No one will remember him. So that's what they said. And because... Subhanallah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam had his children and they died one after another in his life. So he was alive seeing his boys uh, dying in front of him one after another. And also his daughters. His daughters died in front of him. Three of them died when he was alive. Only Fatima stayed alive uh, and and after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then she died. So the only alive child of the Prophet when he died was Fatima, radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, the wife of Ali bin Abi Talib. So when his children died, they said, Batara Muhammad. Muhammad is not going to be remembered after he dies. So they say this also was said by Abu Jahl. And then this verse was revealed, Inna Who is going to be abtar? Who is going to be not remembered after he dies? The person who said to you that. So don't worry about them. It is a relief for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Whether it was Al-As or Abu Jahl or whoever said that word, it is him who will not be remembered. It is enough that he will be in hellfire forever. Imagine, what is people, what are people going to remember him with? When they ask about him, he is in hellfire. So what is the reputation of him? So Allah wa ta'ala wanted to relieve the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Don't worry about what they say. You just focus on your mission and Ignore them. This is not only for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This is also for us. If anybody oppresses you, hurts your feelings, hurts your or harms your heart by saying something bad about you, remember, Allah knows that I am not like that. And the angels are writing. So you better... Subhanallah, leave it between you and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. If someone hurts you or um, accuses you for something bad, you can say, no, I did not do that. But if they keep and insist on harming you, it is better to leave them alone. Because if you want to, subhanallah, you, like, you want to defend yourself and then they will be accusing you, it becomes more and more. You will be more angry. You will be um, maybe arguing with them. And then ghiba will, will come. And then namima. And then you will, be, uh, you will hate this person. So from the beginning, just leave them alone. Any problem that happens to you, make yourself busy doing something. You have a problem with someone, straight away, think about a new project. A new project that will make you busy. 
so that you don't think about this problem. Yes, because I have this problem. If I keep thinking and thinking and thinking about it, I will lose my focus and I will forget and I will be angry and I will hate and I will be sad and depressed and I will not even worship Allah properly and I might lose my faith and I might accuse Allah wa ta'ala for leaving me alone. Yes, this is what happens to the person when I focus in a problem. Slowly, slowly, we have steps. Subhanallah, shaitan comes to you with steps. He doesn't come to you straight away. I have a problem with someone. He doesn't come straight away and say to you, why did Allah do this to me? He comes to you first, think, think, think too much. And then you become worried and then you become anxious and then you don't sleep at night and then you don't eat. And then after that, what happens to you? You lose faith in Allah. And some people leave Islam because of that. Yes, this is what happens. So it is better not to think about the problem. Someone speaks about me, the angels wrote it. Why would I care? Subhanallah. You, you leave the argument with others. Someone is telling you something and you say, no, it is not true. It is better to stop because the Prophet ﷺ said, if you leave the argument and you are the truth, you are the, uh, uh, you have the truth. What you are saying, you are right. The other person is wrong. But arguing always is useless. So if you leave the argument for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, subhanallah, Allah will build you a house in Jannah. What is the house if the river is made of, subhanallah, uh, the description that we said, this is the river in front of my house. So what is my house going to be? What is my life going to be there? This is very, very important for us, my dear sisters. Focus and remember all the time, my target in this life is to please Allah and to go to Jannah. My target is not to gather money, because I'm gonna leave this life and I'm not gonna take the money with me. My target is not the house. My target is nothing except I'm gonna please Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna take care of my family. I'm gonna be a good Muslimah. I will have to do what I have to do. I do the basics of ibadah. I take care of my manners. I improve myself and what can help me in that is remembering Allah. Always with your tongue, remember Allah. I want to tell you one good deed which will help you in that. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, it is something. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, no one will have better reward than this person in the hereafter except those who did more than him. The best, so you will have the highest level of Jannah, highest level of reward, and no one will have better than you except those who said these words more than you. They are words only, you say them every day. You say them every day. You say, لا إله إلا الله. وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Who doesn't know these words? We all know these words. Say them 100 times every day. You have 10, uh, you have 100 hasanat. 100 sayyat will be taken away from your record. You will have the reward of freeing 10 slaves like Ismail alayhi salam. So imagine 10 pious worshipping uh, Muslims. They are slaves and you pay for them and you make them free. How much hasanat you get for that? If you say these words 100 times, this is what you get. And no one will have better reward except someone who said these words more than you. So say them 110 times even. To be 
more than anybody else. Yesterday, yesterday, I was so tired and I said to my kids, I just want to lie down just to rest because I was just from the morning until the evening. I was all, subhanAllah, like I did not really rest. I sat down like that. And I started saying, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. I said them 100 times and then I had my rest. You are resting. You needed a rest for half an hour. It takes half an hour to say them. Maybe for me, maybe for you, if you are slower. Yes, wallahi. Put in your brain. It is so easy to say them and I will say them and I will have the best reward in the day of judgment and no one will get more than me. Be ambitious. Put in your mind, I'm going to do them every day. Write it down. Make your phone. Put alarm. This is the time to say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Put another alarm. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim and say it also 100 times. One of them say it in the morning. The other one say it in the evening. Subhanallah. Instead of thinking just like that, think of people, what they did and what they said or what they go or where they come from. Instead of thinking of people, of, instead of thinking about the house, instead of thinking about whatever, sit down and count, yes, and say them every day yes every day you want to be the winner in this life and in the hereafter say these words every day and inshallah inshallah you will be in the highest levels of jannah take care of your manners take care of this tongue control it control your thoughts don't allow these thoughts to control you i control my thoughts by remembering Allah. I control my thoughts by imagining my Jannah, imagining myself in the day of judgment with Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to grant us the ability and love to remember him every day, day and night. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to give us the uh, energy and love to pray every day. The prayers, the obligated prayers with sunnah before and after every fart and the adhkar after every fart and to say the adhkar in the morning and in the evening every day. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to guide us to the, to the straight path and to guide our children, to guide our husbands, to guide all Muslims to the straight path. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to lighten our hearts with Quran, to make us read Quran every day, to understand every word in the Quran, to practice it, to have good manners as Allah ordered us in Quran and in Sunnah. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to lighten our graves when we die with Quran and Salah. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to lighten the bridge in the day of judgment with Quran and Salah. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that in the day of judgment we stand with the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to drink from his hands water from Al-Kawthar to go with him to Jannat al-Firdaus al-A'la with the Prophets, with the Messengers, with Siddiqeen and I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to be on these manabir made of light in the day of judgment because we gathered to learn Quran, to learn about Islam, and to learn about the manners of Islam. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as we gather today here, to gather in, the, in, in Jannat al-Firdaus al-A'la. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to give us the energy and love to practice Islam, the small things and the big things, and to leave all the haram, small or big. I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to grant us the good manners 
to take away from us the bad manners. I ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to purify our hearts, to purify our souls, to purify our tongues from the haram, to purify our seeing, our hearing from the haram. I ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to be pleased from us. I ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to make the best day, the best moment, the day we leave this life, to be pleased by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The angel of death gives us the glad tidings that Allah is pleased from us. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Jazakumullahu khayran my beautiful sisters and I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to accept from us and grant us sincerity insha'Allah.